So, um, I thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to be here in Leipzig. I want to thank the organizers, and specifically Professor Stolzenberg for having us here. At any rate, this woman has a 5.5 centimeter left lower pole tumor, uh, somewhat posterior, but mainly lateral. Uh, the tumor is quite deep and, and extends into the sinus. Uh, there are multiple vessels, and um, we are going to attempt to do this retroperitoneally uh, using the Da Vinci SI robot. Okay, great. So uh, what, what I'd like to do is show you our port placement before we dock. So if we can have our view of the ports. So before I put the ports in, I use this balloon dilator. Uh, this is a balloon dilator that accepts air. We've insufflated in this direction to create the retroperitoneal space. So this was pl placed through an incision in the mid-axillary line just above the iliac crest. So right above the iliac crest. Now remember, with the Da Vinci SI, uh, it's, and this is a lower pole tumor, so we have to move our ports back because one of the problems robotically is that the instruments, especially lower pole tumors, they're, it's very hard to get back to the lower pole. So we're moving everything back lower in the retroperitoneum today to try to get to this tumor. And we still may have some issues because it's a very large tumor. So we put our balloon in, we dilated the space, and then once the space is dilated, we put our camera port in here first. This is a Hassan-type cannula here, Hassan, with a balloon on the inside. The first port I put in after the camera, and this is a zero-degree scope, the first port I put in after the, the camera is my posterior port underneath the 12th rib, this port here. And so the erector spiny muscle is here, the 12th rib is here. Just in the angle there is my eight millimeter robotic posterior port. Through this port, I used a laparoscopic instrument to push the peritoneum off anteriorly. And by doing that, I created space for two additional robotic ports. So I actually have a forearm robotic approach today and that's very nice because I'll be able to retract the kidney. So I have, this is going to be for my number two arm. And this will be for my number, um, actually, the, we've got it backward here, number three arm here. Okay? So three arm, two arm, camera, and number one arm. My assistant is here. I don't know if you can see this, but my assistant is 12 millimeter with insufflation, and it's near the anterior superior spine. Now, all this space, I made sure all these ports were placed under direct vision, and the peritoneum was pushed off anteriorly. So... That's our port configuration, and now we're going to dock and, and start the case. So come on and bring the robot in. I do all of the tumors posterior and laterally, retroperitoneally, and then the um, anterior tumors I do transperitoneally, okay? Yes, I understand. And, and, and so, so in your experience, in, uh, how many percent do you do retroperitoneal and how many percent uh, it's do about, you do transperitoneal? It's, it's about 60 retro, 40 percent trans. Oh, yeah. So obviously you have a, little, a slight preference to the retroperitoneal approach for yes. this surgery. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. So I know some people that do all retro, but I think the anterior tumors are challenging to, challenging to do retroperitoneally. If you, um, because for the same reason, I, I like to see tumors on face. I like to be able to, to see them. Scissor, please. Scissor, sir. And so the same reason I would do a posterior tumor retroperitoneally, I think an anterior tumor is better done transperitoneally. Hi, Jim. Ben Chong, quick question for you. If you use the XI um, system with this type of approach, does that simplify your port placement? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question, Ben. Please repeat. If you use the XI for a retro approach, do you think that simplifies the port placement algorithm compared yeah, to the SI? I think it does. I think the nice thing about the XI is you can get the arms closer together. So I like, I like the forearm approach because it gives you an arm for retraction. Uh, but with the XI, the arms can be placed closer together. So, for example, you could put the arms, you know, four or five centimeters apart. We usually shoot for seven centimeters apart, six to seven. But because you can get the arms closer together, you don't need as much space to get forearms in place. You're going to start 30 up, 30 down? Zero. Zero the whole case. Hot, hot, okay. hot, 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 hot. Yeah, zero scope. It keeps, it keeps it off the hip. And 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 for the lens, when you go trans, transperitoneally, you also have the zero degree lens? Yes. For I, the case? I, yes. Yeah, All right, so now we're going to start. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to... So right now when you get in, the space seems very small, and it is small. But what you end up doing the whole case is pushing things away from you. So, 
So this is the posterior body wall here. This is the psoas muscle here. This is the quadratus lumborum muscle here. And so what I'm going to do is start back here first, and I'm going to push gerotus fascia away from the scope. You see? This is gerotus fascia right here. And so by doing this, yeah, by pushing fascia. away, I'm creating more space immediately. So we work very hard the whole time to create more space. So there's gerotus fascia. I'm pushing it away from me, and I'm gaining, gaining more space. Now, something I didn't show you when I came in is that my scope is oriented like this. The first thing I did when I came in is I, I rotate the scope about 90 degrees. And the purpose of that is to get the psoas muscle across transversely, OK? And that gives me orientation. Yeah, okay. so the, it's a very so important the, so point. So the psoas is always your first landmark. Yeah. Yes, the psoas is my first landmark. And I want to rotate so that it actually is um, across the screen. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to enter gerotus fascia. And this is the space where the kidney lives. So I'm going to make an incision in, in gerotus just like that. This top edge here is very important. That's going to be very important later on in the case when I look for the kidney. But I'm going to make this as an incision parallel to the parallel to the psoas muscle. This is some perinephric fat. And I'm going to continue this incision in gerotus fascia. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to keep walking on the psoas muscle towards the hilum. There's kidney. And you can see we're almost immediately on the kidney. We, it's very fast. I'm going to continue to open this up a little bit. Now my fourth arm is up here. I'm going to use that to hold the kidney back a little bit. Have you seen the urethra already? We're inside gerotus fascia now, and I'm walking towards the hilum. So I'm working down now towards the ureter. Brandon, come off, please. Brandon, come off. So there's gonadal, there's ureter, there's gonadal. Yeah. That's so it. very nice to see very these good. structures. We're in the lower retroperitoneum. And now I'm going to go towards the hilum. So the XI is very nice, but I did most of my retroperitoneal partials early on. We started actually with a standard system. Actually, before the Da Vinci S was available, we were able to do the retroperitoneal approach with a standard. So you don't need the XI, but it's much nicer. But you can create this space. And, you know, with getting the arms in the crop proper position, you can do this operation with pretty much any robot. But the XI clearly has advantages. So we see the artery already. There's the artery right there. So you can see within minutes, literally minutes, we have the artery in view. And the nice thing about the retroperitoneal approach is it's the first vessel you see, not the second vessel. Unlike transperitoneally, you'd have to work around the vein to get to the artery. With this approach, we see the artery first. So now I'm going to get my fourth arm in to help me. And do, do you feel a difference for retraction of, uh, depending on the, uh, the robot, the type of robot you use, or is it more or less the same? Because one important part is to have good retraction, just like here, that you retract the kidney to really see, see the artery. So, so, so do you have always the same quality of retraction with, with all the robots? Well, I think the retraction is clearly better with four arms. Now, I used to do all the retros with just three arms, you know, one-handed surgery, which is what we did laparoscopically, which is no problem. But it's clearly better, Brandon, come off, please. Uh, it's clearly better if you have a retraction arm, because now I have two arms right now to d d dissect out the hilum. And that's much better than having, right. you know, just one hand. Just one, yeah. I think it's nice this case is on the left side, so you don't have to worry about the cava, but are you, uh, you're obviously more circumspect and careful on the right side because of the cava in this location, aren't you? I think the cava is a nice landmark. I, I, the nice thing about the cava is we know the artery is going to be behind it, so um, I don't think we're any more careful. You know, the aorta is near here, too. I think around the hilum, we're going to be super careful no matter what side. 
Uh, but the cava is nice because once we see the cava, we know the artery is going to be just behind it. Yeah, but it's not really a problem to find the artery anyway. So, but that, that's a big advantage of the retroperitoneal approach. You are but, right but, there. You know, I, I would say some people that are early in their experience retroperitoneally, they may not be able to find the hilum well. And then you can use the cava. You can find the cava and just walk up cephalad on the cava to find the artery. So that's a nice trick if you're not sure where the artery is. It's not, it's not hard for you, Gunter, because you've done a million cases, but for people that are just starting retroperitoneally, it can be challenging. Mm. So here is the artery. Now this is an artery. There appears to be other arteries involved in this case. Actually a lower pole vessel, which appears to be... All right. And then the other question what, is, what, is the what vein. Is What's that? What is your concept for this surgery today? Uh, do, do, do you go to clamp the artery or do you go for segmental arteries? Right. Or? So this is a big tumor. So I think a segmental approach is possible, but it may not be probable because this is a very large tumor. This tumor is probably getting contributions from both the anterior and posterior branch of the renal artery. Brandon, be careful about suction, okay? We don't have air seal. Brandon, okay? There's no air seal, okay? So you, you can't suck as much, all right? Um, so I'm just warning my assistant because we have standard insufflation today. Uh, he has to be very careful. There's the vein there. Suck, suck right there. But if he sucks too much, this space is only a liter and a half in size uh, right now at 15 millimeters of mercury. So we have to be very careful about, you know, how much he sucks. If he sucks too much, then we're going to have a small space. But to answer your question, mm -hmm. I routinely just get the artery exposed. But in this case, this is a very central tumor. I may do the vein as well. So I'm going to, and the other reason to do the vein is I think there's another vessel over here, another artery, based on the imaging I have. I'm not able to show you right now, but there's an artery branch up here. You see the artery up there, another one. We have a very yes, nice model. Yes. We have a beautiful 3D model, uh, a, a 3D printed model, which shows pretty complex vasculature, mainly complex veins. Uh, and the model has been extremely helpful. And I think this is the same group from uh, Orbisano from Torino. Uh, amazing view today of the, of the anatomy. So again, I'm getting the vein exposed here. And, and in your routine setting at home, you always look for the vessels too. So you do a, a, a type of angiography, a CT angiography? Or no, what is no. Your, your, uh, I th the quality of CT scans therapy. now in our hands is very good. So we don't do a specific CT angio. Usually the quality of the imaging is such that you can gain you know, information on a regular CT scan that, that is good enough to help you with the vascular anatomy. Now with reconstructions, which we do as well, although I would say I'm very impressed with the quality of the images I have today, but um, with the quality of the images and the reconstruction, I, we don't do a CT angiogram anymore. Of course, the quality of the reconstruction depends on the, the quality of your initial scan, so that's something to keep, into, keep in mind. So here's the vein. But, 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 but you look very carefully on your CT scan for, for the vessels, so you Absolutely. really know the situation. Absolutely. Yeah, irregardless of the reconstruction, I'm going to be looking, I'm going to be looking for, looking for the, um, you know, for all the vessels. Suck in here, Brando, right there. Mm -hmm. Right here, just hold back, Brando, best you can, right here. Thank you. Suck, suck, best you can, yep. It's nice to have such an experienced assistant, assistant because, as you know, for an assistant, this can be a make-or-break thing because the anatomy and the landmarks are, are relatively limited to the person who's not familiar with the, um, right. the retroperitoneal well, approach. That's why Brandon got on the airplane, believe me, because it's, it's a, <laughs> yeah, the assistant is very important. Okay, so we have the vein if we need it. We may not need it, but we have the vein if we need it. And now let's go up here and look at this artery branch up here. This might be a branch off the main artery, but there was also suggestion of another artery. So right here, you see there's another vessel right here, okay? 
And again, I'm looking at this because I have an, a, an idea already in my mind that there's vessel, extra vessels here. That's, an art, that's a, another vessel here. That could be ureter, possibly. But there's another lower pole vessel we saw in the imaging that has got us intrigued that I'm going to keep looking for. Uh-huh, ureter. And, and you think, uh, I, I'm not aware about the, the CT anymore, but, but do you think this could be a lower pole vessel or? There is a lower pole vessel that we saw separately, which we're going to we're gonna have to find. Yeah. So I'm just going to explore the lower pole now. Now I know where the ureter is. There's a, some, also some very large veins involved here, and this is probably one of them right here. Yes, Brando, yes. Brando, how's your access? So one of the things I check with with my assistant is, how's his access? Am I hitting him with my, no, Brandon, you're sucking too much. Brandon, Brandon. Brandon, we don't have air seal today. That's Be an careful. excellent point. Yeah. It's very little space and it'll collapse in a second. Yeah, no, he's gotta be careful. He's used to the air seal system, which is very nice. The air seal keeps up very nicely with, with uh, you know, suction. But we have to be able to operate anywhere because, okay. you know, this is challenges, so we can't have everything all the time. So that's fine. And what, what, what is the maximum flow uh, your insufflator gives you? Uh, 40, 40, 40 liters? Or? You know, 40 is the maximum. That's what, the, that's what the, uh, the machine says. But the reality is you're going through a port that has another instrument in it already, so the, the maximum flow is well below that. You know, the maximum flow depends on the caliber of the, of the port with, with what you have in the port. And if you have something, you know, like a 5 millimeter instrument in a 12 millimeter port, then, you know, it's going to limit your view. All right, so we have the hilum. Our next step is to identify that cut edge of Gerota's fascia. And we're going to work now to find the tumor. So this is the cut edge of Gerota's right here. So I'm going to pull that up, and we're going to work inside of that layer now as a way to identify the tumor. So there's the cut edge right there. Mm-hmm, nice. So we have a little fat hanging up here. This is the, 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 nephric, the, the fat outside Jorda's fascia called the perinephric fat. I'm just gonna deal with this for a little bit uh, Professor Porter, in the meantime, I would like to ask you if you are planning to control the vein as well in order to prevent any backwards bleeding during yeah. the approach into the tumor, or are you just controlling in the artery? That's a really good question. I mean, I, like I said, 90% of the time, I only do the, uh, the artery. Retroperitoneally, I found it um, not um, necessary to control the vein, but this tumor is very central. And there's a very large uh, venous branch. So now we have perfect visibility. There's a very large venous branch in um, going into the tumor as well at the base. So we'll probably control the vein as well. So here's the cut edge of Gerota's fascia. Remember I told you about that cut edge? There it is. The key is to stay inside of that. If you stay inside that, then you're not going to get into the peritoneum. So it's another layer between you and the peritoneum. And if you stay out of the peritoneum, then you're going to like the operation better. So cut edge, just to show you again, there it is. This is tumor right here. It's a very large tumor. It encompasses pretty much the whole lower posterior portion of the kidney. So it's, um, it's quite large. I mean, this tumor is probably six centimeters. Make a, Go ahead. If you were to make an inadvertent perineotomy here, um, obviously with the fourth arm, you can mitigate a lot of the problems, but do you ever place like a Vers needle into the perineum? No, to that doesn't bend? do anything. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. So what we do when we make a, hole, a, a big hole is the fourth arm, like you mentioned, is the key. But if we're not, we make the hole very large so it communicates. And then if we, if we don't have the fourth arm in place, we put the fourth arm in so that, you know, we can put the arm in under direct vision. And then we just use the fourth arm to hold the, the hole opening. But at the same time, we hold the kidney back or the fat back. And so we gain the benefit of the fourth arm. And this is actually how we started using the fourth arm is that, 
we were doing it, you know, when we made this inadvertent peritoneotomy, we'd use the fourth arm, and then we discovered it had other benefits, uh, like I said, two-handed surgery versus one-handed surgery. So we started using it routinely, and now we use the fourth arm routinely uh, you know, with, for, with a technique that we normally did just as a three-arm technique. As I mentioned, the downside is you need to do more dissection to get that fourth robotic arm in. Brandon, push down on the tumor. Push down on the tumor. So now we're working above. Yeah, I think... I think for the beginner in retroperitoneal approach, once the peritoneotomy happens, it can be somewhat, um, somewhat stressful. Yeah, but, it, but it's the, not the, the end of the case. Is, it's know, not, the fourth yeah. arm can really, no. Yeah, it's not the end of the, the case. The fourth arm can really. Right, and that's what you got to remember. You know, you make a hole in the peritoneum, it's, gonna, it's not, not going to be as great a space, but it's still, you can still do the operation, so, uh, you know, press on. So now we're on normal kidney, and we like to use normal kidney as our landmark. Now we're coming back to tumor. So in cases when the fat is not as compliant with upon removal off the capsule, uh, do you just keep chipping away and keep moving on? Or do you have something, uh, some sort of tip there to, to help those? Because those can be really painful, as you know. Yeah, I mean, I think sticky fat it happens, you know, it's just like anything else. You know, it's something you have to deal with. Uh, I think the key with the sticky fat, the thing I found, is, is to, to not get subcapsular. So I try to work about a millimeter above what I think the kidney is. It's okay to leave a little bit of fat on, but you need that capsule for your closure and for other things. So the key is not to get too close when you have sticky fat, and that will help, you know, making ensure that you have something to close when we're all done. All right, so this tumor goes all the way. It's a big tumor. It's almost the whole kidney here. We're not going to have a whole lot of kidney left when we're done here. But that's okay. I noticed also the patient has, a, has some sort of a pulmonary issue um, where... Obviously, using the retroperitoneal approach may mitigate any sort of uh, issue with uh, hyper hypercapnia uh, uh, with that. But is that something you've routinely employed in patients who have some some issues? Maybe they wouldn't be able to tolerate yeah. retroperitoneum, and you just actually, go uh, our experience is the opposite. I think that you have to be careful. Some people can track CO2 rapidly from the retroperitoneum into spaces, and you can get more subcutan subcutaneous emphysema and pneumomedius dynams. We've actually had pneumoperitoneums as, uh, or pneumothoraces as well. So I don't necessarily think the, the retroperitoneal approach uh, mitigates a pulmonary issue. I think you have to actually be quite aware, and your anesthesiologist has to be quite aware, that you are dealing with uh, um, potentially a situation where you could have increasing end tidal CO2, and they may have to, you know, respirate accordingly to, to blow off that carbon dioxide. So unfortunately, it hasn't really gotten around that, that problem. I think what the retroperitoneal approach is really good for are patients who've had a lot of previous abdominal surgery. Uh, if they've had a lot of previous abdominal surgery, then, um, you know, this is a good way to, to avoid having to deal with that. I mean, uh, many years ago, we did a prospective randomized study, not, not for partial, but for nephrectomy, comparing trans versus retro. And, and actually, most was the same, but that, that was just the point, as you said. If, if the patient has cars, has been operated before trans, yeah. then you better go retro and vice versa. Watch the problem. Okay. All right, so we're getting, um, we're getting around the tumor. So obviously, it was nice to find the ureter early on. When you're dealing with a lower pole tumor, uh, it's really good to know where the ureter is early on because you don't want to get into it. There's tumor there. So what I'm doing is working around the bottom. So I have pretty good access today, and I wouldn't normally. Sometimes this can be quite challenging, right here, Brando, because the, um, the lower pole tumors are very difficult, but I kind of accounted for that early on. This is one of those vessels that we saw. Brandon, wrong side. And, and how do you handle uh, how do you handle very obese patients which have a lot of fat in the retroperitoneum? Yeah, the the obese patients you have to do the um, 
you have to be, you have to go get the perinephric fat, the fat outside your otis fascia. Yeah, this is one of the vessels we wish we seen earlier. And are you going to use the endoscopic ultrasound to yes, I am. mark the tumor on yes. the renal surface? Yeah, I'm a big fan of the ultrasound. We're going to use that very soon because um, I want to okay. see the depth of the tumor. I also want to plan out my margin or resection. So, yeah, we are going so to use you, that. you routinely it per... Yeah. Yeah, every case we use it, even the small tumors. Okay. And the reason is that, okay, you know, yeah. there's logistics with getting the ultrasound in the room... So if you only ask for it periodically, you only get it, you know, half of that time. So asking for it every time in our hospital means that we get it every time. But also, I think it's important to become very good with ultrasound. The more you look at ultrasound, the better you become. And in the U.S., where we weren't trained to do ultrasound routinely, like a lot of the urologists in Europe are trained to do ultrasound, you know, we're not used to seeing things in ultrasound on a regular basis. And then I think it, you become very good at it. You can see calyces, you can see sinus fat, you can see tumor projections that are deep. You know, it, it does help with your ability to identify what's going on. So it's practice. It's, it's more, the more you do with the ultrasound, the better you become, the less dependent you are on the, the radiologist. And I think that's a good thing. We got another vessel. That's good to see it. Brandon, please, tension. There we go. That's the other vessel. This, we're not going to get into this one. So there's some, like, neovascularity or vessels in the fat here that are quite large that, that we could see on the, um, pre, on the imaging. This is one of them. But, but still, this is just a vessel in the fat. This yes, is right. This vessel it, which goes I don't, into the Exactly. Tumor. It's in, it, you know, but I think it's going to the tumor as well, or it's giving some feed to the tumor, but it's in the fat, exactly. It's in, it's in the perinephric, the P-E-R-I nephric fat. Right here, Brando. Right. Yeah, it's nothing, it's nothing exciting. Yep, there's something. That's exciting. <laughs> you can make it exciting for us. Well, we'd like not to, actually. That's, that's as exciting as we want it to be right there. Okay, now push right here. And in your experience, are you, you thinking in the case like that, could be useful to use all the flourishing like uh, first like capability on the Da Vinci robot in order to see better, in, especially right in these cases with multiple vessels right, right and uh, in order even during the dissection of the tumor. Do you use it? Do you have an experience with that? Uh, what do you think about that? Your experience about yeah, that. I mean, I like Firefly. I use it to confirm complete ischemia. That's what I normally use it for. Uh, I know people have used it to determine differential perfusion of the tumor versus a normal kidney, but in my hands, that, that application has not been very helpful. Um, Randall, let's put a hemolock on this. this is what, 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 what I use it for. I, it's, it may be helpful sometime. When you just go for a segmental artery, and, and you use then the ICG, then you really see, see uh, the area of perfusion, and that, that, that can be very helpful in some situations. Okay, so we may switch. We may switch the Prograsp and the Fenestrated, okay? Because I really need to push the kidney away, and that's going to be done better with the Prograsp. So let me do the ultrasound with this, and then we'll probably switch those two instruments. So it's a, it's a very important technical point. Yeah, right here. Yeah, it's fine. All right, so right now what I see, guys, is I see the uh, 3D reconstruction, and I want to see the ultrasound. Uh, can we see the ultrasound on the Tile Pro? Right now it's the 3D reconstruction. Okay, there it is. There it is. All right. So I'm going to make this a little bigger. I want to see that ultrasound a little better. There we go. All righty then. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to mark out our margin of resection. All right, so we got a very large tumor. Oh, this ultrasound is beautiful. Somebody has a good quality ultrasound. So definitely in the sinus. On the CT scan, I thought there could be a projection of the tumor deep into the vein, so I'm going to look for that, but I don't see that. The ultrasound is very good. Yes. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, this ultrasound is wonderful. A lot of vessels. Pretty deep. Much can. See right there, the tumor looks like it projects. Look right there. Do you see the ultrasound? It looks like it projects. Yeah. It, uh, like there's a little projection into the sinus fat of the tumor. This is what I was, I saw in the x-ray. There it is right there. You see that? Can, do, you, do you see the ultrasound yeah. right can, there? Can you look with, yeah, we see it nicely. But can you look with, with Doppler, with this uh, ultrasound probe? So well, you could see the vessels. I don't, I, the, the Doppler doesn't matter. That, I don't care, that's, that's a tumor. That's a vessel. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a tumor, but that's a projection there. So this is not a smooth bottom to the tumor. And that's what I was worried about on the CT scan. And interestingly, the reconstructions don't show that, but um, all right, so there's normal kidney. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull, I'm pulling the ultrasound back until it reaches the left side of the screen. So right here, so that's the tumor edge right there. So I'm gonna make a little mark right here. Same thing here, I'm gonna pull back the tumor. Brandon, push in the probe a little bit, push in a little bit. I want to change the angle. Perfect. So now I'm going to pull back, back, back. So there's normal kidney, and then the tumor's right there. You venting? Good, thank you. So all I'm doing is I'm, I'm on the tumor, there's tumor there, and I come off, and the tumor's gone right there, so right about here. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the top. Yeah, venting, good. You venting, good. Okay, good. Tumor, lots of tumor. I'm looking at the base just, and this ultrasound quality is so good. Yep. A lot of vessels at the base. Looks like a big cut. Was that um, protrusion right at the midpoint of the tumor? That protrusion deeper down to the sinus? It is. It's. It's exactly. It's very. It's, it's a deep portion of the. And we'll, I'll show you again here on the, when I before I come out. Um, and and according to the incision you mark now, it is probably it will be a. a uh, a wedge resection more than, than enucleation. No, 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 so no, no. A few millimeters. No, no, no. You yeah. think it will go? Yeah, from? yeah. so you, okay. you, you don't want to start your incision right on the tumor. So I'm, this will be an enucleation, but I'm taking a little bit of the cortical tissue on top, but I will find the tumor very quickly. But So, you, you, you know, I know so, why so you would you say that. So you go down that. to the tumor and then you follow the tumor. Exactly. Yeah. But you don't want to start right on the tumor at, at the cortex, in my experience. You want to you want to find the tumor and th you know and then go on it. But I'm going to give I'm giving myself a little border here to make sure that I'm I'm not going to start right on the tumor. But I'm going to find the tumor very quickly. That's my goal. And um, Professor Parker, which is your approach when you will find during the the section some big vessels? Do you use five millimeter clips uh, or absorbable yeah. clips uh, yeah. or any that, devices like that? That's, that's a really good question. I use metal, the titanium clips, the metal clips. I have had less problems than with the Hemalox. The Hemalox, 
I've had a couple erosions um, and stones, uh, but I use the titaniums and I have not had any issues. Okay. Okay. Ultrasound out, please. Take it out. All right. So let's let's change the two instruments here, Brandon. We're gonna we're gonna change these, exchange these two. Okay. So take them out and exchange them. Okay. Go ahead. Yep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my, my retracting arm to the arm closest to the um, camera. In this case, um, my number uh, two arm. And then I'm going to put my progress out more anteriorly. And the reason for that is that my assistant, when I, push, when I pull up, I'm coming down on my assistant. And then my assistant has no ability to help me. And, I'd re and I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the exposure and make sure that I have good movement. Okay. You're now looking at the lower pole artery, or what is your plan now? Yeah, there's, uh, there's another vessel in here. I, I just can't ignore the imaging. Uh, the imaging suggests there's another vessel that I have not seen yet. Uh, because if there's a lower pole artery, you must get it with this lower pole channel. Right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Hello. Hello. Everybody, everybody calm down. I'm kidding. Everybody get excited because we, so this is why I came back here because the imaging suggested, so let's be clear. This is one artery I found, okay? That's one artery. All right, there's one giant vein. I'm probably going to take this vessel to get it out of my way. That's a lumbar. And then, and again, this is all about the imaging. I, you know, and I got to have to say, the Porpelia's group, I'm telling you, suck right there. That is incredible imaging. So we've got a vessel here. And I could have ignored it, but at my own peril, I guess, right? And it's quite a big vessel anyway. This is not a little vessel. Had you not found that, it might have been an exciting case. I would, it would have been basically an off-clamp case, is what it would have been. I would have called Dr. Gill to, to bail, bail me out, because I don't do those. Suck, suck, Rando. Suck, suck. Go ahead. All right. That's it. Nice, beautiful. Show me right here. Uh-huh. Thank you. All right. So now we have to... See where this thing is going. Suck the smoke, Brando. It's okay. You can pulse. You got a pulse. Huh? Another vein here, too, apparently. Different? Well, it's good to discover that now, not in the case. That's a coronal vein. This is a lumbar. Down, lower, lower, lumbar. lower, lower, Brandon, lower. Okay. Yeah. It's a lumbar. See, it's going back here. Have you identified the coronal? It's going right down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. See, this is a lumbar vein. Yeah. 
But but have you seen the grenade so far? It's up here, I believe. Stop, stop right there. Good, right there, Brando. So, if you remember early on, uh, I'll show you. There's Yurder, and the Gnadl is right here. So we trace that up. Yeah, but that's the way into the Yurder. Yeah, there's Yurder. So I need to take this so I can actually see this vessel a little better. Suck right there, please. Good. And see what the hell this thing is. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a branch. Yeah. Uh-huh, suck. It's, it's a huge vein. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I don't really see, like this, this I, I don't see this vein on the artery. imaging. I don't see this kind of vein on the imaging either. I don't know where this is coming from. It's almost like that artery is uh, check the coming camera. back to the vein. But, 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 but this vein is so large, you must see it on the imaging. Okay. Otherwise, you can forget about okay. imaging altogether. You mean on this side? But I'm on the left side, Indy, so that means I'm going to go all the way across. Okay. Okay. This is a left-sided tumor. So that means you want me all the way across the other side. I, yeah. You got it? Okay. I just don't know what this is. It's interesting. Yeah, I think it, I think the, uh, you know, we have, we have an unusual vessel here and I need to find out what it is. And I will. This would be a really nice case for ICG, for sure. I think we could give ICG, not clamp this vessel, and see if it actually even, you know, what it's perfusing. What's perfusing, right. Um. All right. Doesn't look like it's going into the aorta, though. It looks like it's starting to curl away. Yeah, if this is aorta here, which we would expect it to be, what, what's that? What's that, Indy? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I've got Dr. Gillen here, which I'm very grateful. He's, he's looking at this anatomy with me, and we are, you know, we're going to make sure we've got everything. Just like, you know, he taught me how to do many years ago. We take no risks. We make no risks. You know, the case is, is only going to be successful if we know exactly where we are. And, uh, you know, and this dissection can be done. It's not a problem. We're just going to take our time. But, you know, if we, if we um, you know, and then you start thinking about things like, well, what, you know, what else could that be? Suck right here, please, Brando. Let's find the aorta right here. Let me just make sure I know where that lumbar clip was, which is right there. Okay, good. So right here. I mean, it, I mean, it always could be a segmental artery just making a turn. They sometimes yeah. really go some crazy directions. And uh -huh. as more as you dissect, the more I think this is such a segmental Right here, Brando, please. Yep. All right, there's aorta. Okay, now let's go back to this. So this is aorta. Where is this coming off? Let's trace it down, Brando. Right here, buddy. Right here. like it's curling in front of the main renal vein. Mm 
No, it, no, it's certainly segmental artery. Come, come from the main vein artery. Yeah. That's right. That's not. It looks like the splenic actually. I don't, why is it so low? I, I mean, this looks. This could be the splenic vein here too, but um, it seems well the IMV at this point possibly. But um, all right, we'll leave it alone. But it, if I mean the other the other thing to do is just to go this side. There's ureter. There's kidney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 and go crazy. Yeah, yeah, get it out. Yeah, who cares? Exactly, not a problem, not a problem. Okay, all right, three bulldogs and a bolster. We're going to cut three, three bulldogs and a bolster, okay? I'm going to clamp those vessels, and then if it is, it is. If it's not, you know, we're not going to hurt anything. Right, I think it's a good plan. Indy's got good, good, uh, a good plan here. All right, so I don't know what that is, but we're definitely going to clamp it. All right. Okay, Brandon, yep. we have the bag. We have extraction sack ready to go. All right, so we're going to cut, cut, cut. Bag specimen, go to needle drivers, and then, and then we're going to go with a 4 stitch first. The 4 the 4 stitch, Brando? Four, yeah, long one. Okay, okay, here we go. Okay, so that's a vessel. God knows what it is. Brandon, uh, we're gonna push beyond there, maybe. Oh, no, 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 that's not what we want. Go, go in there, Brandon. Go in there. Push in there. There we go. All right, let's go with that. We're going to go without the vein first and just see what we got. Yeah, yeah, turn the, turn the pneumo up, please, a little bit. But still, to come back to my former question, this is not enucleation, but this is uh, you, you cut in the in the normal tissue. So this is a uh, segmental uh, excision. Come on, come on, Brando. Yep. All right. <coughs> You're going to clip those vessels? No. Uh, I'm going to do something to them. <laughs> Looks good so far. I think it bears mentioning to uh, maybe people don't do this a lot that you haven't dug yourself into the hole. You're still kind of working at it, edge, 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 little by little. Yeah, that's the fat of the hilum, isn't it? From the inside. Yep. There's fat.
collection system. Yeah. The metal, five millimeter, Brando, five millimeter? Yeah. That you will clip, don't you? Yeah. Go huh? Ahead. If you can, Brando, if you can. If you can't, don't worry about it. Right here, if you can. Yep. Mm hmm. Good. Let's go with that. We're going to cut, we're just going to go across that giant vein. We're going to suture that later. So you know the technique kind of changes when you get in the base. Cutting through the cortex and then when you get into the sinus, it's more blunt to section. Collecting system. There's tumor there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Clip right here, Brando. Clip. Big vessel. Big vessel. Five. Five. Yep. Five. Uh huh. Right there. Perfect. You should have good access to it. Good. Stay in there. Stay in there, Brando. Yeah, stay in there. Okay, suction back. Mm hmm. Another, another clip. Yeah. Right here. Best you can. <laughs> no, no, no. Up here. Up higher. Higher. Right there. Yes. Good. That's all right. That's all right. One more. One more. One more. One more. Don't go away. Don't go away. Don't go away. Right here. You're beautiful. Nice job. Don't go away. Don't go away. Don't go away. Okay, sucker back. Suck here, please. You okay? Okay. I don't know if we'll bag this, Brandon. It might just be too big. We're just going to throw in the lower, lower retroperitoneum. Okay, needle drivers? Looks nice. Is this a 4 -0? 4 -0, yeah. So right here, Brandon, let's look for the large vessels, collecting system. So I'm just going to start on the vessels here. A giant, giant needle today, but that's okay. This is 15, Brando? And this, this is micro for O? Yep. What is it for Sutra? Brandon, what are you doing? That's good. That's good. Suck there. Show me the calyx. There you go. There you go. That's good. Just a just a pulse. It's a little bigger needle than I usually use. I usually use the RB needle, but we'll use this today and be happy. <laughs> we even have a needle.
Suck in here, Brando. Show me. Give me another stitch, Brando. 15, yep. Bring it in uh, while I'm doing this. Drop it, drop it, yeah, drop it, drop it. Suck, suck right here. There's another calyx right here. There it is, you see it? There's that vein. Remember that big vein, Brandon? You want to get that vein for me? Yeah, I get it. No, ear, no, I got it. I got it. No, I'm going right this to the... Drawing, but the robo looks really nice. The 20, 20 centimeter monocurl, please or the PDS, whatever it is today. Let's have it, let's have it. Let's have it. That's all right. That's all right, Brandon. We can adapt. We're in Germany. So this is a O PDS? No, this is a 3.0 PDS. We usually use a monocryl, but we just need some absorbable monofilament suture. I mean, this is what a lot of people use with the V-lock. I like this monofilament better. What I'm going to do here is what I'm trying to do is reapproximate the medullary tissues over the sinus. And what that does is it, it closes the dead space of the deep defect, but at the same time, it also um, gets some of these venous sinuses that might be open as well. So if you take one suture and do it, it pulls through. But if you take multiple sutures, like I'm going to show you here, and then sequentially cinch it down, then it's our Brandon, please be quiet. So, so you make three layers of sutures, basically. Yes, exactly, Gunter. But not if you don't enter the sinus, right? Then you just do two. Mm -hmm. oh, but it looks very nice. I like it. I'm having a hard time with these needle drivers today. They just don't want to...
Ready? Ready? Yep. Okay, give me some singles. We might come off, Brando. Yep. All right, let's, let's come off our explanic experiment here first. All right. Suck the puddle, Beller. Suck the puddle, Brando. Okay, there's a splenic. Suck in there, Brando. Suck. All right. All right, let's just see what we got here now. Okay. Single? Let's have it. Okay. Yeah, but you see, it's not to bleed, so it was it was obviously a segmental artery. We took both clamps off. We took it off. Go ahead, yep. Uh, the main, okay, I, I, mean, I missed the main artery, okay. Give me a hemolock right now, hemolock. Let's do another okay. hemolock right now. Drop it, drop it, go. Go ahead, Brando, quickly. Yeah, in the corner, in the corner. No, you got to hook it, hook it, hook it, hook it. Uh. Hook it, yep. Take these two out. Take these two out. So our time, our warm ischemia time is over. It's been over for a while. I don't know what our time was, but Brandon, hook it. Yep. Another stitch. Yeah, that'd be great to show me that. Perfect. This is basically just a bunch of cortical bleeding. It's not that bad. Um, you know, we did, the, we did the majority of our closure on those first two layers. What is your philosophy with tissue glues? Do you use it? I'm sorry? Tissue glues, for example, fibrin glue or what's No, it? no hemostatic agents. Tissue sealants, hemostatic agents. Just to just. Brandon? Suck, suck. This is like a 2OSH that you're using now? Yeah, it's a little bigger needle today, but that's okay. It's uh, actually, it's an MH needle. Uh, we don't have the SH, oh. but that's, that's fine. Hemolock. Actually, you know what? I don't like that stitch. Give me another stitch, Brando. 
Yep. Because <laughs> you don't need a clip remover. <laughs> no. No, this is um, this is wherever you need to do. You need to do what you need to do, right? Right, right. So but what you I wouldn't be able to do this at VLock. Reverse the stitch. Yeah. Just drop it, Brando. You're fine. Just drop it. You're you're awesome. You're awesome. Give me a sucker. So let's let's look at the defect. Look, let's look right there, please. Yeah, we'd love to get a suck right there if you could. That's it. Nice. I'm going to go a little deeper on that one. There we go. There we go. That's better. Give me one now. Hemalock. Randy, you don't need to write on the tissue. Pull up this way. Pull this way. There we go. Good. Thank you. I can slide it down. Okay, we're gonna good, we're gonna look at that. We're just gonna go with those for now. Needle out. And the bolster you use that in, if we're to. Brandon, open your jaws. Open your jaws. Come in. Come in. Come in. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah, the bolster, bolster you'd use to dab at the. Well, the, you know, sometimes you know we have some significant bleeding, and if we don't have great ischemia, we had really nice ischemia here. Uh, mainly because we had the splenic, we probably had the whole body clamped off with the two vessels. But the um, <laughs> the the bolsters, in case there's some bleeding that occurs here, suck right there, Brando. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, okay. Let's do another. Let's Wait, do the another. The body was clamped off. It's only 15 minutes. Hemolock. What was that? Yeah, the whole body was only the clamped for 15 minutes. Up, yeah, that's good. Minutes. Yeah, that's good. Let's go, Brando, right here. As long as it wasn't the brain, it doesn't matter. I'm sorry, Gunter? As long as it was not the brain, it doesn't right, matter. Right, exactly. Or the heart. The heart's also good not to clamp. Go ahead, right there. Take it out. So that's the one spot we have more, you know, we're a little close there, but I think we're fine. It's intact. You got good sinus. Hold on, Brando. Hold on. Let me elevate. Go ahead. Uh huh. And let's do this over here. There you go. Perfect. Indy, you like the margin? You okay with the margin? Okay, good. All right. We are, we are pleased with the margin as well. And you yeah. get a big Thank you. Close. All right. I hope Thank you, you much. Can hear that. Thank you for the moderation, guys. Very really, nice. really appreciate your comments. Thank you for your uh, your support. Uh, a little unusual with the vessel, but I think we are. The end result is very good. We've got a nice perfused kidney here with a you know big tumor. So yes. thank you so much. Thank you, uh, organizers, right, Vito, uh, Uwe, Indy. Congratulations. Take care. Bye bye.